Where am I going now? I'm going to a place I've already been, but I don't, I, I feel like I left a, a lot on the table. So I'm going back to Three Rivers Petroglyph site. So I hope that you enjoy it. Enjoy it. Or else. So I'm at Three Rivers Petroglyph site. And before I even got here, my negative internal soundtrack started sounding off so hard. Like, what are you doing coming here? You already, you already worked it. Why are you coming here? People come and go, you know, they're here for 45 minutes and they're back in their vehicle and they're, they're flying off to the next. I don't know. I've been on the road for three weeks. This is always the point where I really start to get just incredibly melancholy. It's tough. You know, you start wondering what's the purpose of it. And, and, and I hate this feeling. You just feel powerless against it. Like it just consumes you. Like it's negative horribleness. This is Aguirre Springs campground in the uh, Oregon Mountains Desert Peaks National Monument. Time will tell if my camera gets ruined and I'm all wet, you will know what happened. And it's beautiful, like it's stunningly beautiful. I can't get over it. Everywhere. This is hands down the most dangerous road I've ever driven in my life. I can't believe they have it open. There's no, no sign of a plow come through there's a foot of snow out here and it's ice covered underneath it there was no signage saying you shouldn't go through here like it's I'm past the point of no return and it's like everybody else has peeled off and left look at these roads unbelievable it's 11 30 in the morning you, you, you'd think somebody could get out here with a plow truck and try to keep people from killing themselves or at least give people a heads up I am really distraught this is an unbelievably dangerous road. They've done nothing to clear it. Like I am, I, as you can tell, I am massively freaked out. I gotta turn it off and focus on driving. Good morning, beautiful people. I am at the Gila Cliff Dwellings National Monument. I'm just taking a quick walk around. It's not big. Uh, the the hiking trail is only a mile to get up to the, the dwellings and then back down to the visitor center or the gift shop. I don't know if I would drive here in the winter time like I did. If the, the conditions are good, I would definitely put this on a list if you're in this area in New Mexico. Like this is the first, first dwelling. They don't have any access to look into it, but the volunteer guide told me, Sean, hey Sean, that there are eight rooms behind that gigantic wall and that there were estimated 30 to 40 people that lived here this was a, a structured society and they knew how to build walls apparently with roofs but they had timbers that would go through there and then they they estimated that there was also cross timbers that they put up so Something where it would still let the smoke out, but it provided shelter, a ceiling. And I don't believe they actually had any openings through here. This was actually created just so people could walk through. 
their entry method was was ladders to get in. So if they ever were attacked, they could just pull the ladders up and stay stay hidden behind the walls. But this is where they where they would have lived and had fires and food and family and a life. Uh, not a hunter-gatherer life. And as you can see, all the ceilings are covered in very heavy soot. I believe they think it's well over a thousand, or maybe it was even 2,000 years worth of, you know, fires and soot build up. Think of the work. Like there had to have been a very seriously dedicated workforce to do this. You know, which which indicates that there's food supplies and food stores and here's another ladder we can climb up. But yeah, every one of these rooms you can see had a ceiling at one point. See the, the timber holes? So they had a roof over their head. And look at there's corn. It's 600 year old from that the, the people that built it that's the corn from them which is astounding it's definitely a thought inspiring place uh, very similar to three rivers petroglyph site had about a thriving little community i would very much so like to have seen what they were like, what type of people they were like, to hear their language, to, to see their society. I think it'd be very interesting. I've become a tour guide, haven't I? Eight minutes. What the? All right, so you get to see me in action. Scared of heights, going down a ladder. This would be some seriously compelling video. Yeah, so that's that's a quick tour of the Gila Clip Dwellings. I hope you enjoyed it. As you can tell, I'm not enjoying the drive anymore. This is like the worst vehicle on earth for going around uh, corner after corner. And I'm tired of it. I'm super hungry. I thought I was going to be, like, I thought I was going to run into a city where I could get some food at some point, but all I've done is drive through a mountain range. Switchback, 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 snow-covered roads. Ah! Where's a McDonald's? A McDonald's in a straight road. I want the interstate and the rest area.